I'm Brock Bites, the guy that runs the internet. If you've been to Vegas and used Wi-Fi in a hotel, a casino, a restaurant, a bar, a gas station, you've probably used one of my networks. We are looking at our trouble tickets lately and 39% of our calls come from uh, Wi-Fi issues. Because when you look at it, all the chipsets in all the devices, from your phone to your iPad to your computer, they're the same chipsets. It's just what they put them in, the software and the hardware that they put them together with that makes anything different from one to another. In this video, we're going to go over how to optimize that and how to make it the best Wi-Fi experience. This is really the enemy of Wi-Fi, metal. Everything that hits metal, it just reflects. It doesn't penetrate, it doesn't do anything. So if you have this behind any kind of access point, it's going to just send the signal here and bounce off. It's the same thing as in a mirror to any kind of Wi-Fi receiving or sending device. Here we have materials that are easy to go through such as wood, sheetrock, plastic. When you're sending a Wi-Fi signal out and you have to be on the other side of those, Generally, it's not too big of an issue. It'll keep going for a pretty long distance. What you really have to watch out for is what's inside the wood, what's inside the sheetrock. If there's metal in there, such as metal studs, then it's just gonna reflect, and that's what degrades your signal to make it uh, not really the greatest working. One of the most interesting materials that you can go through is glass. It can act like nothing, or it can act like a big mirror. Such as on the strip, I've tried to actually go through a window by pointing a signal from one side to the other side, and could get, not get anything through it. The reason being, the uh, windows here are heavily tinted because of the heat, and so when I send a signal through it, I often just can't see anything or very, very small. A few times on the strip, I've actually sent a signal up into a casino, bounced it off the glass, and got in another part of town by using the uh, refractive waves of their glass. So how do I get more speed? Basically, speed is a function of the channel size times the modulation rate. So what's channel size? If you look up here, we have a allocation guide of all the frequencies in the United States. Now, if you look at uh, what we use for Wi-Fi, we use a small part of the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum and a small part of the 5 gigahertz spectrum, and that's all we have that you can use for Wi-Fi. If you want a lot of channel use, that's great, but if you add two access points in there and they're both using that, they're gonna conflict with each other and you're not gonna get that much throughput. For instance, if you look at like a highway, a highway uh, has, say it has four lanes. Well, if uh, three of those lanes are congested and you can get one by, you'll go a lot faster than trying to get through the three lanes. If you have four clear lanes and you're going very fast through high modulation because you have good signals to everyone, you're gonna get a lot of throughput. But the more you clog each channel by either interfering with each other, such as a wreck, or if you uh, interfere with other devices or your own home uh, baby monitors, you're gonna just cause the speeds to go slow for you. And if you try getting devices out there that don't have good signals back to the AB, because you're going through some materials, that's gonna clog up the uh, highway lanes as well. So you're not gonna get much throughput. Oftentimes a smaller channel that's cleaner will give you more throughput than a larger one that has a lot of interference on it. This will allow you to get more uh, data through that one lane. There's no noise that you're competing with to get data through the same carrier frequency. So the next part that influences wireless speeds a lot are modulation rates. And modulation rates are the amount of bits you can send through one hertz. So when you see that you have a good data rate of like uh, 500 megs on a channel and then you go down further in your house and you get down to, I don't know, 36 megs, you know that you've gone down in modulation rates because either the signal is weak or you're re causing too many reflections or the signal has just been absorbed by something along the way. So here we have your typical constellations of your qualm values as they're being received. You can see you have, this is eight times qualm, this is 16 qualm times qualm. This would be qualm 256 times uh, versus qualm uh, 64. So you have 16 times 16 or eight times eight, 
And so you're able to get a lot more throughput on that, which is a cleaner signal versus the uh, upload to that, which is over here, that's not as clean. The things that also influence it are the power levels. You can see that what it's receiving and the carrier to uh, noise ratio, which are the same, but they keep changing over here. So there's some kind of noise that's very intermittent and keeps coming up over here. So the next thing that really inter influences your Wi-Fi signal is the power level. The power levels are a number in negative value between, uh, it's like 120, which is the worst signal you can get down to about negative 40, which is about the strongest signal you can get. And for instance, a signal of about negative 60 is ideal. That means that you should be able to get all your qualm values as long as there's no noise. You, as long as you are receiving a clean signal, you should be able to get good modulation rates. So what drives power levels are the amount of things you're going through and your noise. So if you're going through a lot of materials like metal, you're gonna disrupt the waveform and you're not gonna get that much power going into your uh, receiver and then you'll just see uh, your qualm values keep going your, or modulation rates, the numbers keep changing back and forth. And you'll get a lot of transmits and discards because your uh, power level is too high and it's bouncing everywhere for the receiver to use it as a data. So everyone's at home with their uh, kids working at home and their kids are on school and say you have like five kids all on the internet at the same time. Well, that access point has to transmit and receive for a bunch of different individual devices now at the same time. So why is this important to you optimizing your Wi-Fi? Well, one bad client that's causing a lot of retransmits can oftentimes slow down an entire AP where you think that uh, your Wi-Fi sucks. In reality, it's just Henry over there that's sitting there and uh, he's in a part of the house that just doesn't get good signal. So if you have bad airtime, it has to sit there and try to re, uh, retransmit and it'll try to uh, set, tell this device to keep sending it up here and it'll just keep retransmitting all the uh, data until it gets the data there. That's called airtime. So the total amount of airtime used, it can be really quick if everyone has a good modulation rate or it can be really sucky if you just have one bad person over there that's eating up all this airtime. That causes your airtime to go really low and it's really hard to diagnose that problem uh, unless you know what you're looking for. One of the last things I'd like to talk about that influences your signal is interference. You've heard me talk about it thus far in the video and that is one of the biggest things that you gotta watch out for. If you're in an apartment complex and everyone's on the same frequency, you're not gonna get good data rates because there's only so much channels that you can use. But how can you look at how much channel you have? Well, you can get a thing called a spectrum analyzer. A lot of the higher end APs have software that will actually show you the air because it's not just Wi-Fi that's using those uh, frequencies. You got your baby monitors. You got your microwave uses 2.4 gigahertz to cook things. You got a lot of other devices out there that you wouldn't expect that causes a lot of interference with your local devices. And interference is the, is the thing that really, really will destroy a signal. And sometimes you can't even figure out a way to get through it if, if there's just so much noise in an area. At that point, your only choice is to hardwire something. So here we have a thing called a spectrum analyzer, which visualizes your airwaves. So here you can see that we have the channels uh, 5100 to 5900. Of that, you can reasonably use uh, 5180 to 5840 for your Wi-Fi. And if you look here, you can see there's a lot of noise between 5200, uh, probably about 40 megahertz between there, between 5500 and 5600, and 5700 to 5800. Those are channels you want to steer clear of because uh, they have the most noise in there. So when you're placing APs around, you want to look for the clearest things that there's nothing else broadcasting on. So with your Wi-Fi, you have two frequencies that you can use, 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz. Generally, I always try to stay away from 2.4 gigahertz because there's only 80 megahertz of spectrum. When you actually chop it into channels, there's only three non-overlapping channels at 20 megahertz. And 20 megahertz is the largest size and the smallest size that you'd ever want to go uh, because nothing listens on less than that unless it's a proprietary thing and nothing, you're not gonna have any frequency because everything broadcasts on that and the signals go a lot further than five gigahertz. So when you talk about uh, frequency, a five gigahertz wavelength is about five inches, about the size of a pine needle. So when you go through walls, the larger the wavelength, the more penetration you get. 
When you think of like TV waves, th that works on 700 megahertz and you have meter size waves. That goes through just about everything. But when you uh, go down to five gigahertz, the waves are about half the size, 2.5 inches, and they will get reflected by a lot of things that 2.4 would penetrate. Now, with 2.4, when you only have channels 1, 6, and 11, if you're doing a big facility like a, a casino floor or something, it means that you're really only going to be able to put three access points without overlapping on yourself, which makes it really difficult to get any kind of throughput because the airtime is always going to be used from your interference. So we talked about all the things about Wi-Fi, but where do you actually place these things? If you ever go to a restaurant or anywhere, you'll notice that they're usually in the center of a ceiling, and that's for a good reason. Most access points are omnidirectional. If you look at antenna patterns, and when you look at that, uh, it's going to be like a sphere that comes out of radiation. So what happens when you put an uh, access point behind a TV? Well, you only get a little bit penetrating if you have uh, wooden studs because a TV is usually made of metal and just going to reflect and cause disruption in the waveform. Now, when you uh, are actually designing these things, you want to look all around and see all the materials that something's made of. So generally, if you put it on a wall, that'll go great through the wall, but if you have metal studs, it's not gonna go, it's only gonna be great for that one room, and you're gonna reflect a good part of the signal. For instance, I have an access point here, and I put this in a trailer park. Well, one of my installers installed it like this. Now, the guy that was living behind it was having a problem and couldn't see it, even though he was only like uh, 50 feet away. Your typical access point should go 200, 300 feet unencumbered by anything else. But why couldn't you see this? Because it, half of the antenna right here is actually being reflected and disrupted right behind it. So all we had to do to fix this was we had to move the antenna right here so that the antenna part, which is right here, was able to see it. So what an antenna does is it takes the output power and just focuses it in a certain way, whatever the pattern is that you're trying to achieve. So the, the more coverage you get, the less power output you're gonna have because you're trying to get more of the focused power into a larger area or smaller area. So here we have different access points in their antenna patterns. Here you can see that this one is radiating in a certain way, but under it, you're not able to see much radiation coming from it because it's not designed to. So one time I've had a problem where I put these antennas out and everyone was under them, couldn't see anything. So all I did was I switched them to these ones and I'm able to see everything because it has a much wider band that it can actually radiate to. And you can see the uh, power levels that it's actually achieving over the, uh, from those antennas. Lastly, I wanted to talk about mesh networks. As we've noticed, they have been proliferating lately, and they sound like a great idea. You put an AP up, you want, run one wire, you want additional coverage in the back, you put up another AP. Sounds great, but there are some problems with them. Personally, I never mesh anything. I always run a cable. The reasons why is, as you get more APs, you have to use the same frequency for all of those things to send and receive on. So you only get one channel. If you're using a lot of devices and they're all using your mesh network, then you'll notice some uh, problems as you add more devices and you mesh more because you're all using the same amount of airtime and you're all getting collisions and it's all happening over the same carrier. So it's just uh, a bad idea to keep adding devices where you should just be adding a cable. Using all these techniques such as placement, making sure that there's nothing on the channels, actually cabling to your APs can cause you to have a great Wi-Fi experience and you won't even, it'll just become ubiquitous. You'll just use your Wi-Fi and you'll never really think about it again. If you don't do these things, they can make you pull your hair out. In these days when Wi-Fi is so important is, is it's a lot of people's entertainments, a lot of people's gaming, a lot of people, that's how they relax and enjoy is watching uh, television at night. If you're sitting there watching that thing uh, buffer, it's not gonna be a good time. If you go home and you just wanna relax and watch your latest episode of your TV show, your Wi-Fi network can really cause a quality of life issue that I'm hopefully giving you the tools to overcome.